Marvin and Melvin have a mandate to stir the fires of revival within people's hearts and to awaken the church to their identity. Their message centers around knowing the Father's heart and equipping others to fulfill the Great Commission. They have a unique ministry ministering together. To learn more, continue watching and be blessed. Well, hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Love Program. I'm your host, Barbara Carpuzian, and as always, I'm so glad that you decided to join us. You know, the program title is Everlasting Love, and we want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. And you, you're gonna hear that almost every program that you watch, you're gonna hear that at the top of the program because we feel like that's just such a, an important scripture um, for our viewers to hear. So many people feel unloved, um, so many people struggling with their value, their self-esteem, but God makes it clear that he came into the world and was willing to lay down his life and then take it up again so that he could bridge that gap between uh, mortality and an eternity with him. And it's not very difficult. You don't have to pray with these and thous. You know, you can simply say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I know I've messed up. I've made mistakes. And you know what? The Lord is such a, he's such a gracious God. The word says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us. So it doesn't matter what you've done. And you just, you say, Lord, come into my life. Um, I'm sorry for what I've done. I want to give you residence in my heart. I want you to take charge of my life. And, um, and now I ask that you would lead me and guide me by your Holy Spirit. Um, and that's it. And then from there, it's very important that you uh, find yourself a Bible, that you get connected to a church, that you get connected to other believers, and that you start talking to him on a regular basis. And if there's any way that we can help you with that, um, we, we, we put up our, our website, Feel free to reach out to us, uh, send us, uh, uh, contact us. We, we'd be happy to pray with you. We'd be happy to give you more information about the program, maybe even direct you uh, uh, to a church. But don't hesitate. Please feel free to, um, to contact us. In addition to our website, you might see our Facebook page pop up, our YouTube channel, uh, and, and invite a friend to, to, to watch as well, okay? Um, before I introduce our guest today, uh, which I had the pleasure of, of, of hearing uh, uh, in, in another place, in another time, and was, and was really blessed by their ministry, I want to share a scripture with you that comes from Ephesians chapter 4. And it says this, it says, um, however, he has given each one of us a special gift according to the generosity of Christ. And, and that is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. And we're talking here about Jesus. Notice that it says he ascended. This means that Christ first came down to the lowly world in which we live. The same one who came down is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that his rule might fill the entire universe. And he is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. And their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ, until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature and full grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. And so really, 
um, the crux of this is that God has given these wonderful ministries to the church, apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists. Um, and we have a couple of those with us on the program today. And you can figure out what they are as you listen to them. <laughs> they have... Um, several titles, but I'm, I'm so glad uh, to have the Perry brothers <laughs> on the program. And yeah. we have Melvin yeah, Melvin, and Marvin. Mm -hmm. And no, you're not seeing double. <laughs> there are actually two individuals here with us on the program. Uh, they are twins um, and powerful twins at that. And they are both ordained ministers of the gospel. Um, they operate in the prophetic. They they speak. Uh, they're businessmen. They just have a variety of, of uh, credentials. So welcome to the program, Melvin and Marvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you for having us. Yes. Yeah. And they may talk in, uh, in, in symbiotically there too. <laughs> <So>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a twin thing. <laughs> that's a twin thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, thanks again for coming. And uh, I really want to hear how the both of you uh, came to know the Lord, your your mm -hmm. individual stories, because mm -hmm. even though you're twins, you're these uh, these uh, fabulous individuals, both yes. called to mm -hmm. serve the King of Kings and Lord mm -hmm. of Lords. Uh, so, uh, Marvin, I'm going to start with okay. you. Okay? All right. Would you kick it off for us? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, first I want to say it's an honor to be here um, in front of the viewing audience. And as far as, you know, my brother and I, uh, we was fortunate to grow up in a home where our parents knew the Lord. They instilled value, values in us. But, um, like, our earliest memories of just knowing God was when we was younger. Um, I can remember our mom teaching us, you know, about prayer, teaching us when we was like three or four years old how to pray, like praying, praying the Lord's Prayer, um, praying Psalms 23. Yeah. So then that's one of my earliest memories of, of prayer. And I think she really introduced us to, to God, like at a young, early age. So since then, I had an appetite for him. Uh, we was raised in the church. And there was a period of time when our mom, she wasn't able to take us to church. And our dad had to step in and fulfill that responsibility and take us to church on Sunday. So even when he wasn't going to church, he knew the importance of bringing us to the house of the Lord and mm. giving us that foundation in God. So so we, we grew up in church. We was active in youth ministry. And it was probably about when we were 13 years old that that I felt like the Lord really pulled on my heart and really uh, say, now is the time to really commit your whole heart to the Lord and profess Jesus publicly mm. as your Lord and as your Savior. So it was about 13 years old when I made that public confession, mm -hmm. you know, went to the front of the church you know, uh, surrendered my life to the Lord and then got baptized like the week following, you know, mm. the Sunday following. But um, God has really been through our, yeah, in our lives for really for most of our childhood. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, guess I, I could say for for most of our childhood, <laughs> um, like the thing is, like we're twins. So then oftentimes God does something in each of our lives at the same time. So then while God was ministering to him, like now it's time for you to step up. He ministered to me on that same day. We looked at each other in the church and then we felt, OK, then now's the time. Yeah. Now, even though our mom introduced us to God, like we learned the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm, she did not want to force us to really make a commitment. I love she that. wanted us to make that decision for ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then it was around that time, even though we had a love for God um, prior to 13 years of age, we had various ex experiences and encounters with God yeah. even prior to that. Yeah. But talk it was, about some of those well, when you're ready. Okay, yeah. well, let's just talk about when we first got filled with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> <laughs> which is, yeah. was at a young, early age. It was Resurrection Sunday, and I'm pretty sure you remember the details of it, too. Yeah. If I make a mistake, you can yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, fill mm -hmm. in the gaps. <laughs> but um, it was Re Resurrection Sunday. We were in church, and um, there was a song that was saying, I forgot— um, it wasn't I Surrender All. It was um, one of those songs for that holiday, um, okay. dealing with the resurrection of Jesus. Okay. And um, I can remember at that time, it was as if I felt something open up above me. Hmm. It was like something just mm -hmm. opened up and I felt this presence, this energy that I've never felt before. And I was vibrating literally from the inside out. Like How I old were you at Melvin? It was, we was probably about seven or eight, seven, seven or eight, okay. seven or eight years old. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I felt his presence. Mm -hmm. It was tangible and it lingered for a while. Like, 
and it, I didn't even explain what was happening with me to Marvin. I just knew that this was unusual, but yeah. it felt like it was mm -hmm. divine. Like I knew it was God that was on me because I was feeling his presence. It was tangible. I even felt my bones shake. Wow. So then it lingered with me yeah. even after service. Yeah. Like even when we went home, it was on me. Yeah. And then I turned to Marvin. And I was like, Marvin, like, man, something happened to me in, in service. And he's like, you too? <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. So then, like, yeah. So I guess, <laughs> you know, I can pick on from there, from there because, you know, at the time we didn't even know that each other was having yes. this phenomenal right. experience yeah. with the Lord. Like in this and on Resurrection Sunday, we felt this this overwhelming presence of God come over us. And I was also vibrating. It felt mm -hmm. like someone plugged mm -hmm. me into a yes. power socket mm -hmm. and I was being elect electrocuted. That's <laughs> that's what I way. felt. <laughs> so then, you know, it lingered actually like even towards mm -hmm. the end of service. I can remember even trying to walk to the car it was sort of even hard but I didn't want to let anyone know how hard it was to, to walk to the car but I just felt the glory and the presence of mm -hmm. God on mm -hmm. me with such intensity mm -hmm. so then mm -hmm. later on when we got home that's when Melvin began to share yeah. what had happened to him and, and I was like you too like the yeah. same thing happened yeah. to me and we were sitting yeah. right next to each other in the service so I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure the Lord or his angel whatever happened came and said I want to mm -hmm. give it to both of them at the same yeah. time so I feel like did, did you question at all like mm -hmm is this God or what is this? Cause you're eight years old. Mm -hmm, and yeah. I, I know a lot of mm -hmm. pretty bright eight year olds, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So what went through your mind? Well, you know, I think, you know, we knew it was the Lord mm -hmm. yeah. because um, I was being touched cause um, our church at the time, um, they used to host these um, annual Easter um, plays. Mm -hmm. And uh, we was watching this one scene with, it was the resurrection scene mm -hmm. where Jesus was coming out of the grave. He, mm -hmm. he was resurrecting. Yeah, was right then. Yeah. And it was at that moment where there was such a glory, like the power of God <laughs> came. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the Lord, like at that particular moment, he chose that moment to sort of yeah. impart into us, to mm -hmm to anoint us at a young age. Mm. And from there, you, you can really say our desire from God grew. Yeah, for, grew yeah. and expanded. Mm -hmm. Even though we decided to make that public confession years later, we had a relationship with God, but yeah. now we mm -hmm. wanted to make it public. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted to say, okay, this is our stance. We're going to stand for him. Mm -hmm. And um, we did that at 13. But yeah, that was the time when God first touched us. Yes. When we were um, eight, seven, eight years old. And I will always remember that because of how it felt. Yes. It didn't feel like anything I felt in times past. Like mm -hmm. you can tell it was not of this world. It was yeah. heavenly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then that's the thing that I, I will, love that God is tangible that way. Yeah, right. right. He really is. And you were able to recognize it at seven, eight years old. And then you make this public confession. And why don't you just share why a public confession is important? Well, it's always good just to declare like your 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 um, decision to follow the Lord and make it public. I think yeah. we cannot hide our candle and put it under a bushel. Yes. We need to let our light so shine before men. So then it was at that time when I counted the cost and I knew what it meant to really serve God and to surrender all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying you don't have bumps along the way. You mm -hmm. have your journey in Christ. But I knew the value and importance of making a public declaration to announce to your friends, to your peers, mm. to your family that Jesus is Lord and Savior, you know, mm -hmm. of your life and um, so that they can know that. And yes. I think there's a power yeah. even in confessing and stepping forward. Yes. Like there's something that happens to you as an individual when you make that public declaration. Yes. So yeah. then um, yes. it's very important for yeah. us to okay. do that. And I think even, you know, the scripture says in um, Romans, it says with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, That's but right. with the mouth confession is made yes. unto salvation. So yes. there's something powerful about when we confess with our mouths, what God is doing in the heart, yeah. that that sort of proclaims to the world, mm -hmm. like who we are. There's mm -hmm. such a power in confessing yes. Jesus as Lord. Like it's mm -hmm. not just enough to, just, you know, of course, we know salvation comes through belief in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But even when you make that public confession, when you're not ashamed of him, That's when right. you boldly That's stand right. before the world and you mm -hmm. say, I live for Jesus, I'm going to submit my life mm -hmm. to him and live for him. There's something powerful yeah. about yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a scripture, if you confess me That's before right. men, I'll I will confess, confess you before you. my father. That's so then right. There's a benefit to confessing your salvation, your, your love for Jesus to mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. Because yes. what Jesus said, he'll confess us to the Father. That's and right. When the Amen. Father knows who you are and when the Father knows your name, which he does, he knows everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's something special when he could 
really say that he's mine. Yeah. You know, this is yes. my my son. This yes. is my child who doesn't reject me. He's not ashamed of me. Yes. yes. But he's willing to mm -hmm. carry his cross and yes. follow me. Yeah. And well, your confession also validates the relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it's a demonstration of your love, you know, yeah. to the father, right. right? So 13 years old, like that's like eighth, ninth grade, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And eighth so grade. I think you had made a statement, Melvin, that you had to count the cost. Mm -hmm. So what did that mean? You're going into high school, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, it, yeah, it meant not doing what everybody was doing. else was doing. <laughs> really, that was it, you know. And um, we knew, even even prior to that, like we were privileged to have a good Sunday school teacher. Um, I will always remember her, Rosa Hughes. Um, she taught <laughs> us the Word of God at a young age, and you know, her lessons always stuck with me. So then I knew what it meant to really walk as a believer, walk as a Christian. Mm -hmm. So then. I endeavored to do that. I just tried to make sure I walked a straight and narrow and um, not do some of the things that some of my peers were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the reason why we're blessed. We never had some of the issues that some of our friends had. Yes. Yeah. yes. Because uh, we made sure that we would always follow mm -hmm. the Lord mm -hmm. and um, keep him you know, before First. us. Yeah. 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 And we, you know, always stayed connected in the house of the Lord too. Yes. Like mm -hmm. all throughout high school, you know, yes, we, you know, we was involved in school activity. You know, we did some of the things that, you know, some of our other, you know, peers did, but we didn't, you know, veer off to left field and, yeah. you know, do, do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it was because of our root system. We was grounded in the mm -hmm. church and we was yes. active yes. that that sort of framed our life yeah. and framed our journey yes. in the Lord. So yes. then, um, like really I attribute it to that, just even yeah. our parents making yes. sure yes. that we had a good foundation mm -hmm. in the church where mm -hmm. even when they, they couldn't come, you know, they constantly would yeah. take us there or make a way for us to get there because they knew the mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But um, throughout high school, we was active in youth ministry, but um, it was like around college when we started off mm -hmm. <laughs> in college yeah. where God just took our walk to a, whole, to a whole level. level. Well, let me ask you before you get to college, mm -hmm. did your, any of your peers call you out? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are mm -hmm. peers that probably thought, wow, these are, you know, these are some good guys. But yeah, were there yeah. peers that kind of called you out to like, hey, what are you like a holy roller or something? Yeah. Bible bumper. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It wasn't know, really it, like that. Like, I think okay. yeah, for okay. us, like, okay. I think we had a lot of favor because yeah. we was twins. twins we was yeah. really popular. Okay. Yeah. Like everyone knew okay. us in the school. Yeah. Okay. So then the, the kids didn't really like pick up on us, like yeah. pick, yeah. like pick on us mm -hmm. or. Yeah. You know, even try to target us because of our faith. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was just the yeah. Lord shielding us and giving us favor yeah. uh, with the other students. And they knew if they went after one, they were going to yeah. have to deal with yeah. two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like we had a pretty good and I can honestly say just there's advantages and disadvantages to being a twin. Yeah. You know, and one of the advantages is that people want to get to know you, you meet a lot of people and there's favor that comes with that. It's like a blessing. Mm -hmm. But at nice. the same time, it could be, you know, I don't want to say a curse, but, you know, oftentimes people group us together. Yeah. And they right. don't understand our individuality. That's right. That's yeah. right. And that's why I wanted to say that at the top mm -hmm. of the program, that you're both these individual mm -hmm. people, men, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, it, and you may be called differently, too. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, we need to recognize that. It's mm -hmm. powerful. Right. When, but when I heard the both of you, you were together. So <laughs> okay. I was like, I got to bring them both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so, okay, Marvin, so you start talking now about college. Yeah. And so something happens in college. Right, right. right. Like I can yeah. honestly say that it was in college when yeah. we had like a true revelation of the father's heart where we, mm -hmm. we was pulled into a place of intimacy with him. Yeah. And really, you know, I can attribute it to our experience at the campus church we was a part of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As soon as we landed on campus, uh, we got immediately connected to a campus ministry and a campus church. And we started serving through that and gathering with them. And even, you know, through some of the powerful prayer meetings and gatherings, like the Lord would come and we would cry out for souls and we would yeah. weep and travail mm. for souls to come into the kingdom. We would pray I for our that. campus and prayer walk yeah. the campus and really just believe God. But um, I can pinpoint like one particular moment when we had gathered and I know mm. Melvin, he can add to it. Um, we was in worship and we began to sing this song, Here Am I, Send Me to the Nations mm -hmm. as an ambassador mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. And I don't know if you've heard it, it's, a, it's an old song, 
But as we began to sing that, the presence of God just filled the room. Like I just was weeping under the presence yeah. of God and I made that decision like, Lord, use me as your ambassador. Yes. Lord, send me to the nations, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, so that we just begin to sing this song and it, and really everybody, <laughs> it seemed like yeah. in the room was just crying and weeping. Everybody. And it was as if God yeah. was just pricking our hearts mm -hmm. and giving us his yeah. heart for the nations of the earth. So mm -hmm. since then, like, you know, I've always had a heart for missions. I've always had a heart for the lost and just praying for the lost and praying for nations, the 1040 window, yes. uh, just really believing God. Uh, yeah, the 4070 window as well, that part of Europe that, yes. you know, they, yes. they, they know about God, but they are not, you know, yeah. as passionate yeah. about God. And secularized. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, you know, it's just during those college years that we be just began to commit a lot of time to prayer and intercession. Mm -hmm. And from there, that's when a lot opened up yep. for us, even in the area of the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And just we began to see God move in a phenomenal way during mm -hmm. those college years. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. like, I think when you're young, you have this fire, mm -hmm. you have this intense zeal for the Lord and you just run with him. You want to tell everybody you know, about him. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't mind, you know, suffering persecution. Yep, yeah. I hear you. You know, uh, <laughs> and that's why the Lord, you know, he loves the young because there's a strength there's that a they zeal, have. There's yes. a zeal for the Lord that they have. So then even during our earlier years, and I'm not saying we don't have it now. Well, <laughs> but zeal without knowledge too, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. we have to grow in knowledge, grow in knowledge, knowledge and maturity yeah. like mm -hmm. we talked about in Ephesians yeah, exactly. chapter four. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so a lot of, you know, I can say our, our ministry development was mm -hmm. really cultivated in the place of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Like, so I w can you talk about that? Because, you know, you use the word intimacy, mm -hmm. right? And for those who are believers, they may get that, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near mm -hmm. to you. Abide mm -hmm. in me and I'll abide in you. But for somebody who's hearing that word and just knows it kind of from like a, a fleshly perspective, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean intimacy with God? Well, I know for me, like what it means, like knowing his heart, having union with God. And can you know his heart? You can explore his heart through relationship, through yes. worship, through spending time with him, because God's heart is, is eternal. It's mm -hmm. limitless. It's without bounds. So then uh, we, 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 from the inside of our heart, when there's a longing to know God, when there's a longing to spend time with him, um, you know, that's how I look at it as intimacy when we're walking with God, mm -hmm. when we're thinking about him, mm -hmm. uh, when we're mindful of him. Mm -hmm. So then um, I know earlier on for us, like we really committed our lives and set aside time, even in college, even in the rigorous schedule of college, mm -hmm. we still made time for God and made him a priority yeah. in, our, in our lives. Yeah. Yes. And I can honestly say, even for me. Like intimacy is really involving him in every aspect of yeah. your life, like even yes. our studies. <clears throat> like yeah. I would include God in it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Jesus, OK, we're <laughs> sitting down yeah. here. We're looking at this. Help me. Yes. And then I would commune with him by way of even reading what I'm reading, whether it's biology, mm -hmm. you know, anything done with mathematics. And that's why even in my later years in college, when I started really practicing that, I started, you know, excelling, you know, in my academics. But I included him in my life. And that's what intimacy is, because oftentimes we want to compartmentalize time and say, OK, I'm intimate this time. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, we yeah. go about our day. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you include the Lord th throughout your day, he's part of your everyday activity. Yes. He's on your mind. Yes. You know, I think yes. that is what fosters greater intimacy. And it just opens gifts mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. different things yeah. that mm -hmm. you did not think were there. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's awesome. And I want to segue into what mm -hmm. God started to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, oftentimes there are people that may be searching for the gifts, mm -hmm. searching for the yeah. call. Yeah. You know, but for those who cultivate, I love <clears throat> Nia, what you said, Marvin, for those who cultivate a relationship with him, mm -hmm. it's out of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's out of making him the center. It's mm -hmm. out of seeking first the kingdom that everything else flows. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Exactly. So like when you look at even when you look in the new, you know, the mm -hmm. book of Acts, it wasn't yeah. like people ran around. It was like, oh, well, you know, we're, you know, you're a prophet, you're an apostle, you're a mm -hmm. teacher, you're a this, you're a businessman. But it's as we walk in relationship mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. find ourselves walking in the calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then people can, then people can recognize, yep, exactly. you're, you're, you know, oh, you're, oh, you teach the word mm -hmm. or, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So you're in college and, 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 mm -hmm. 
it, it just intensifies. Yeah, it just intensifies as, you know, you know, for me, as I committed time to really praying mm -hmm. and even in between class sessions, just mm -hmm. praying and there would be this hunger. Like I would be sitting in the lecture hall and I would just have this hunger. Like I couldn't wait <laughs> to get back to yeah, my room I <laughs> so I could spend time with yeah. Jesus, so I could spend time mm -hmm. with the Lord. Wow. So there was just this burning. I don't know what to say, the insatiable hunger yeah. for the Lord that was yeah. really intense, but I think it punched a hole in my life to deeper encounters with him because mm. that's when he began to come. That's when he began to show me yeah. certain things. Yes. But um, like, that's how we was really activated in the gifts was really through prayer, through yes. really yes. even yeah. being um, through ministering on campus, through evangelizing, yeah. through one-on-one -on -one witnessing. Yeah. It wasn't something that we tried to prime up but it was something that came, like you said, mm -hmm. out of an overflow, yes. out of our relationship and out of our intimacy mm -hmm. with him. Because one thing we have to keep in mind is that God knows who we are. And before we're formed in our mother's womb, he knows us, yes. and he yes. ordains us. And as we walk with him naturally and organically, those yes. gifts come alive on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. As we walk in intimacy with him, as we desire to share his heart with the world when we're not mm -hmm. trying to be something we're not it just naturally yes. comes as a natural yeah. overflow That's and an good. outflow mm -hmm. of the grace and goodness of God yeah so um it just started happening where I would just have these visions and these mm -hmm. prophetic experiences yeah. um it like I remember one particular week where it was so intent that the burden of the Lord was so intense it was just as if like I could say probably for an hour span of time, it seemed like every person I looked at, it was as if like the, the, the heavens were open, like everything was open to me. And I kind of mm. knew their past, their present and their future. And it was like the Lord just gave me that experience just for like one hour, just yes. to know how that feel mm -hmm. to get downloaded with so much information. Mm -hmm. But he was showing me what largeness of heart does. Like yes. when we spend time with God and he enlarges our heart, he gives us the capacity yes. to feel what he feels. Yes. And, um, you know, we're limited because, you know, we're finite, but at the same time, our spirit is eternal. Like yes, our spirit lives yes. on beyond this this world, this yes. realm. And we mm -hmm. can receive information uh, at various intensities and speeds, if yes. that makes sense, you know, in one mm -hmm. particular moment. Like in one split second, it's kind of like you get like Down. thousands and yes. thousands of yes. hours of downloads. So yes. then that, that would happen to me in, in college. And I was just like, wow. And it became mm -hmm. so overwhelming that I kind of was like, okay, God, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, can I please <laughs> yeah, like live normally? Yeah. Can I still mm -hmm. go through just, and, and yeah. the Lord, he's so gracious and, and he, he does that. Like he's a gentleman. He's, yes. he's not going to force more on you That's right. um, yeah. than you can bear. Yeah. Or, 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 you know. Well, and I want to connect some dots for the audience here, you know, because when you become a believer, the spirit mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, who's mm -hmm. a person, right, comes yeah. to live inside of you. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. the same spirit that raised Jesus okay. Christ from the yeah. dead. Yes. It's the same spirit that searches the heart and mind mm -hmm. of God, God. and yeah. comes back Amen. and gives you that revelation. And so as as the audience, you know, as folks are listening, this shouldn't like freak anyone out or it's <laughs> it's or or like, oh, is this superstition? No, I mean, there's an evil realm mm -hmm. out there that is operating mm -hmm. yes. <clears throat> yes. in in yeah. in 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 evil ways, yeah. you know, whether mm -hmm. it's psychics or mm -hmm. we yeah. can you know, witchcraft, what are pagan mm -hmm. paganism, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they I mean they have an ability to operate, but we are seated with him in heavenly mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. yes. So the 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 power gifts that, that he gives us yeah. while well, the giftings are much more powerful yeah. and, and, and we're seated above, mm -hmm. right? But so many people are not aware of that. Yes. I know that's part of your heart is to, yes. to help people to recognize yeah. their identity mm -hmm. in Jesus, to recognize the <clears throat> giftings and all the gift, the giftings mm -hmm. are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like I even think about the gifts of healings. Mm -hmm. Right. It's right. plural. It's plural. Mm -hmm. So that could mean, you know, there are multiple, mm -hmm. yeah, right, healing of gifts, yeah. expressions of those gifts. Mm -hmm. So you have these encounters, mm -hmm. and you know how are you, you know how how are you figuring out God? What do you want me to do with all of this? Like, I feel like I could just <laughs> mm -hmm. combust. I yeah. feel like I'm going to yeah. like right. implode. Right. What do I do? Well, yeah. Well, I know the outlet for me was really prayer, like praying what I felt, praying what I experienced back to him. Like whatever the father showed me, just being a conduit to release his heart mm. into the earth through intercession. So then 
uh, that's how the Lord would deal with me because, um, you know, during that time I would feel, you know, people's traumas. I would mm -hmm. feel, you know, what, what the father, the father's hearts towards them. So then I would just pray for my individual friends or people that we knew that I would come across and I would get these strong impressions. Mm -hmm. You know, I would just pray for them and just believe for greater breakthrough, greater mm -hmm. deliverance mm -hmm. in, in their lives. But mm -hmm. the outlet for me was just really prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Melvin. And I can remember um, that particular time because I remember when Marvin was, came home and then I could tell there was something on his heart, on his mind. And he is like, man, like I am so bored. Like people need the Lord. Like, mm -hmm. because he saw something that not everyone seen as far as the traumas, like everyone, he came, like at the time when he was explaining, he felt their pain. And then he even saw darkness hanging mm -hmm. over people, mm -hmm. like dark clouds and mm -hmm. things hanging in the air. Mm -hmm. So then it was a, a lot to observe in such a short period of time. But then I knew, okay, you know, God is doing something, but it was during that same time when we both spent a lot of time praying hmm. and we both had this desire for God that even exceeded, you know, what we wanted out of academics. Now, I thank God for what we learned, but my passion for God far outweighed my desire to get a degree at the time, even though God was going to make me successful in that. I just knew that my success came through my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But it was really then that, that things started really opening up and even especially in evangelism, yeah. okay. like just going out ministering to souls. And I think when God sees that you're willing to give up yourself to lead others to him, mm -hmm. something happens. Like, you know, it's all about these selfless expressions, like mm -hmm. whether you intercede for others or you evangelize to others. Mm -hmm. It's just something special about those two things that can help unlock the yes. treasure on the inside of you because they're both selfless. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. deal with self. They deal with you helping and giving to others. others. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, so then that's when we learn that. And of course, we were privileged to have a pastor, a campus pastor that fostered that. We would wake up five in the morning, six in the morning, pray before <laughs> class, pray mm -hmm. for like an hour and the whole atmosphere will be buzzing mm -hmm. with the life of God. Like yeah. you can feel it. You can hear it. Like it'll be buzzing, like zzz, like the whole atmosphere. <laughs> so then that's where we grew and grew and that's where we, yes. were, you know, cultivated yeah. in. And it yeah. led to um, where, where we went to even after college. But so, I can honestly. Yeah. yeah. And I want to talk about that. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, I want to say something about, you know, Melvin and Marvin's story, because a lot of times we have um, guests on our program who've come out of dysfunctional settings, mm -hmm. you know, who've yeah. come out of, you know, oppression, addiction, and have fabulous stories of transformation. But what I love about this story, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The fact that you came out of a home, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, with, with your parents fostering that, yeah. and then being part of a church community, and then you really developing your relationship mm -hmm. and that being nurtured, yeah. I think is even more powerful yeah. Yeah. that you were you that like you said we might have bumps and mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. here and there but you stayed the course yes. Amen. right yes. so you finish college yeah. mm -hmm. and what happens next <laughs> well you know we finished college at the time um, I didn't have a job I was looking for work Marvin he had a job out of college uh, working at Abbott Laboratories it's a you know pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical okay. company mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. During that time, um, the Lord was giving us dreams on, you know, where to connect as far as ministry and church. And um, both of us knew, like through dreams and different things that God said that he wanted us to connect with this one church, um, Crusaders Church in the city mm -hmm. of Chicago under yes. the Apostle uh, John, John Eckhart. Eckhart. Mm -hmm. You know, so then, um, you know, of course, you know, we went there and um, one Sunday we decided, OK, this is it. This is where God is calling us. Let's yeah. um, plant our roots here. Yeah. So, yeah. And I would like to interject because uh, mm -hmm. we really spent a lot of time just really praying because mm -hmm. we just really wanted to be in the right place. Yes. Because at the time we was living in the north suburbs. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with, you know, Waukegan, yeah. Zion, that yeah. area. Yes. But um, to join a church in Chicago, that would, you know, that required a deep level of commitment yeah. like, you and sacrifice. Yeah, that hour, right, right. Half an hour and a mm -hmm. half, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, we, we waited, like we made sure that, you know, yeah. we heard from God and it was through multiple dreams mm -hmm. that the Lord confirmed, this is where I want you to be. Okay. And from there, you know, God began to add more to our life and, and, mm -hmm. the, and the experience there. 
uh, was phenomenal. You know, mm -hmm. growing up um, in such a church, a powerful church with Apostle John Eckhart for um, almost 17 years. Mm. Um, like uh, we've seen some amazing things, have some amazing experiences. And uh, we really attribute a lot of what we do to being under his leadership yeah. for, all, for that whole time. So, uh, yeah. but okay. yeah, I don't know. Do you want to add to that, yeah. Alvin? Or? Um, yeah, I think he did a good job summarizing <laughs> it. But really, that's where we started developing, yeah. even in our understanding of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Like we had the zeal of God before. But then now we were getting Get the, the knowledge, knowledge. <laughs> his wisdom. Mm -hmm. So right. then that's how God processes you. You know, he needs the passion. But then now he's like, OK, that's you have right. the passion. Now I need you to have the wisdom. You're and the a knowledge. stallion, but now I, I need yeah. to train you. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You know? like, exactly. Hold, hold back mm -hmm. a little bit. There, exactly. Right? And, yeah. you know, even with our studies in school, you know, we were, you know, I could say we were blessed to have a good mind to understand certain things. So then whatever Apostle John taught, you know, I just dove into it. You know, I read his books and um, I received an impartation as far as mm -hmm. understanding how to interpret God's word and understanding how to dissect his word and present mm -hmm. it. So then I can honestly say that, you know, if there was one thing that I did get that I knew God wanted me to get was just an understanding of his yes. ways, an yes. understanding of his word, yes. an understanding of his nature. I, I want I want the audience to really hear that, right? Because we said mm -hmm. earlier, right, you, you know, you get saved, right? Yeah. Um, but that discipleship component, and you talk yeah. about being mm -hmm. under your pastor for 17 yeah. years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And of course you were doing and growing right. and mm -hmm. all right. of that, you weren't stagnant, but you think about the disciples, I mean, they were with Jesus 24 seven yeah. for three. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that was like directly with Jesus, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, they still messed up after yeah. that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But that discipleship <clears throat> component is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And that you were willing to yield and humbled mm -hmm. yourselves mm -hmm. and come under that mentorship. Yeah. Yes, right? yes. Yeah and, yeah. yeah, and extract the most benefit from it. But yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah, like I can honestly say like, you know, those years of just sitting under the word of God, mm -hmm. um, you know, learning the ways of God yes. through scripture and him even teaching us how to rightly divide the word of yeah. truth yes. with the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, that really blessed our lives in a tremendous way. Yes. So, um, so, well, so so I, you know, in in having uh, listened to your ministry once before, and you know, uh, read a little bit, and so I know you have uh, a heart for evangelism. Mm -hmm. You've talked mm -hmm. about that for equipping the saints, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's also this prophetic piece mm -hmm. that you talk mm -hmm. about, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I want I want to talk about that more, and I want to make sure that we get an opportunity for you to talk about what you see in 2022. Mm -hmm. okay. I I mm -hmm. I feel a kindred yeah. spirit in because the Lord pr speaks to me very prophetically directly from his word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I, so I feel that kindred spirit there, but I, I want you to talk about the prophetic, right. Okay. And how you operate in that and, and, um, and why that's important to God. Yeah. Right. So yeah. whoever wants mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess I can share, um, because, you know, the prophetic is really all about revealing the heart and in the mind of God to to his people, to the church and to the world. And I think even in times that we're in, even today, like if there's anything we need to hear, like we need to really hear the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What is God saying yes. you know, to his church? Uh, like what is the pulse of his heart? Like what what themes is he is he highlighting, yes. you know, to the church? Because, of course, you know, um, you know, just like you said about God speaking um, during certain years, like when he highlights a year, when he focuses on a year, or talks about a year, there's often a certain theme of his heart that he wants to communicate to his people. There's a special message to kind of help us to plow through the year under his grace and mm. even be blessed for for the year. So. Mm -hmm. um, but really the prophetic in a nutshell is just really revealing what is on God's heart for the world. Like mm. what is he thinking? What's on his mind? And really articulating that and communicating that through various means, whether it's vocally, through the voice, uh, whether it's through arts, expressions, music, song, dance. Mm. Like there's many ways we can reveal the heart and the mind of God yes. unto people. But um, 
But yeah, that's what it really means to be prophetic um, in a sense, being sensitive to God and really expressing his nature and what he's saying mm -hmm. to the church and what he's saying to the world. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just really communicating the yeah. heart and the mind. Are, are there some moments that you can share with us that you feel were very powerful, either mm -hmm. where someone prophesied yes. to you or where you mm -hmm. prophesied? Because I know the, the mm -hmm. Bible says we see through a glass darkly, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but we also know that this is an office. It's also a gift, mm -hmm. right? So share if, yeah. you, if you will. Okay. Yeah, I have one that I could share and it's sort of like a merger because it's a merger of two passions. It's a merger of the prophetic and even evangelism. Yes. Because um, one time, it was one year we had a Halloween outreach in, in the city of Chicago on the north side. Mm -hmm. And um, it was at night and a lot of activity was going on. But um, I knew that God wanted us to be out there. And um, we, was, we was with our team, evangelism department, because at the time Marvin was a leader in that department. Mm -hmm. So then we went out and um, there was this one guy that just was sitting on a bench and he was just staring at um, our group in particular our dancers, because we took our dance team out mm. at night and they started dancing, waving the flags and banners. And then he just was staring and looking. And then my eye caught him. And then all of a sudden, you know, he just dashed. But then I went to follow him. I was like, hey, you, um, you know, um, I saw that you were looking. Um, the Lord highlighted you to me. Um, my name is Melvin, I introduced, him, introduced myself to him. And then I started, to ask him about his walk with the Lord, and he did not want to hear it at all. Mm. He was totally resistant to God, like totally, like to the point where, you know, he didn't want to hear any of it. So then after talking to him, trying to bring down the walls, he decides to walk away and cross the street. But then while he did that, that's when I mentioned something to him about him being hurt in the church and how that really wounded you when you were young mm. and how it was the leadership of the church that um, mm. affected you. And then that's when he stopped in the middle of the road, turned around, came to me and said, who are you? Mm. I love that. Mm -hmm. He said, who are you? I love it. And then I just said, I'm a servant of the Lord. And I believe that the Lord wanted me to talk to you. So at that point, it was a complete change. So the walls were yeah. down. He heard me out and then he shared his story that mm. it was true wow. that he went to like the Greek Orthodox Church and he seen a lot and m molestation, mm. all that stuff happened. Mm. But then um, because of the prophetic, it opened his heart. Wow. I love to receive it. God at that time. Because yes. he, he uh, realized that God was concerned about that, mm -hmm. yeah. that issue, that, yes. you know, he was carrying this pain around for so many years, but mm -hmm. God knew and God was there at that yes. moment. And God yeah. wanted to address and confront some of his yes. fears, some of his angers regarding yeah. that yeah. abuse or when he was mistreated, you know, in that, in that church. So, yes. mm -hmm. well, and a lot of times you see the prophetic operating in tandem with healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, because healing is not just physical, yeah. right? It's emotional, mm -hmm. it's psychological, mm -hmm. it's all of that. Yeah. Is there one more story that you want to share? Because then I want to yeah. hear your thoughts about 2022. Okay, yeah, yeah. well, I can share just <laughs> yeah. a recent one that okay. happened a few months ago. Okay. And I think my brother, um, he'll remember um, when I start sharing this story, but um, I think it was maybe in October, maybe this past October, but we was asked to go to a, a gathering to minister and preach. And while, you know, we were preaching, there was a moment of ministry where after the yeah. sermon, you know, we ministered to the people and the Lord had highlighted um, two, two young ladies mm -hmm. um, sitting in the audience. And um, like, I don't know, it was as if I had an out of body experience in a sense. I don't know how to <laughs> describe it, but I began to open my mouth and the Lord began to minister to, to these two young ladies and at the time, like, I didn't know that they had just gotten rescued from um, human trafficking. Wow. Yeah, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. like, and this is their first time, you mm -hmm. know, coming to a church service. Mm -hmm. But the Lord knew, you know, who they were. Mm -hmm. And my spirit was being pulled to them. So that I began to minister to them with such detail that just the presence of God, the love of God mm -hmm. touched these women. Um, mm -hmm. One of them was so resistant to God prior to coming. Mm -hmm. Like, she didn't believe in any of it. 
she just kind of came because one of the leaders from the um, from the uh, house that they were hiding at or staying at invited you know her to come. So she didn't believe in any of this, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, she came and the Lord just revealed pretty much her timeline, what happened when she was six and seven years old, and how things were done to her unjustly through the people that should have loved wow. her. So then wow. it was. Is you know, I ministered to her and then to her friend and the Lord did such a profound work. Um, they I mean, they was yeah. under the glory of God. They, they, they you mm -hmm. know, the presence of God. And there was not one single dry eye mm -hmm. in the room. Yeah. We were all crying and mm -hmm. kind of in tears mm -hmm. because the Lord's heart was there yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And even with the one girl, the second girl, like what you hit on, like sometimes Marvin doesn't even know what he says. But I have to <laughs> fill him in on it. But he started talking about her reproductive organs oh. and how she felt like she would not have children. Wow. And as soon as she he said that, she just collapsed, boom, wow. to the ground because that was an issue of <laughs> yes. concern for her. Yes. So then God knows who's coming yeah. and he knows what he wants to say to his people. But mm -hmm. then during that day, we felt like the love of God, it just dropped in the room and mm -hmm. there was not a dry eye in the room, like I love everyone it. was crying. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, and that's the power of God. That's the power mm -hmm. of his ministry because mm -hmm. the prophetic ministry is mm -hmm. his ministry, right? Yeah. He's the great prophet, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm so grateful that you yield yourself to him and allow him to work that way through you and your heart, Melvin, for evangelism, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I would love to hear <laughs> what you believe God is um, uh, speaking to you mm -hmm. about 2022 yeah. and okay. uh, take it away. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, do you want, okay, well, I guess I can start. <laughs> yeah. I love how, I love yeah. the yeah. Sim, yeah. <laughs> yeah, symbiotic though, yeah, relationship. Yeah. Like, even though we're twins, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware that, um, you know, of course, there's differences, you know, between us, differences of anointing, but mm -hmm. we can complement each other yes, well yes. in the right moment. And I think that's how God created us to sort of model to the world what team ministry, what unity looks like, because mm -hmm. it's in, in the place of unity that God commands the blessing, yes. that he releases the blessing yes. life forevermore. So, so yeah, but I guess, you know, I'll yeah. start and <laughs> share what I feel like the Lord is saying for, for this season, because really 2022 is really a part of a seasonal narrative, something that God is doing within a season or a chunk of years of time. But, um, I can, sh okay, well, first I'm going to share that and then we're going to go specifically to what he told me about 2022. But um, back in 2019, the Lord began to share with me about how he was going to move his church into a, a great time of transition, but this will be a time of the opening of the eyes. That a lot that was hidden is going to be revealed, mm. that it's going to be a time of revelation of things that are hidden, but also an awakening to who we are as sons of God. Mm. Um, because, like, right now we're in a season where I believe it's a blessing to us. Like, even though some people may look at it as this is horrible, but really it's really the mercy of God and the blessing. It's a blessing for us to go through a time that we're in such as now so we can grow in our view of God and grow yes. in our knowledge of him. Because mm -hmm. I think for all, so, so often the church can become complacent and we can just go through the motions and kind of live callously or casually mm -hmm. through life with no conviction. And I think it's times like this that God uses and sets aside to awaken us, to confront the areas that mm -hmm. we lack faith in, yes. to deal in, and address our fears so we can have a larger view, you know, of who God is. So mm -hmm. this is really a time where God is trying to enlighten the eyes of our understanding, give us mm -hmm. eyes to see, ears to hear, but broaden our view of him and, mm -hmm. and awaken him. So this is a time of just global awakening, mm -hmm. you know, global unveiling and mm -hmm. uncovering. So we need to thank God for that. But um, what he showed me about 2022, I had a vision you know, for 2022 and what he showed me, he showed me a man going through rehabilitation. Like mm. um, it was a man who um, he had suffered some injuries for the past two years. Like, I don't know. I just knew he was a man that had suffered injuries and needed physical therapy. So mm. in this experience or in this vision, I see him going through the various exercises, trying to retrain his muscles to to work again and function again. 
And I felt like the Lord was telling me in this experience that this year would be a, a rehab year for mm. many in my church mm. from some of the trauma and the injuries That's from good. the past two years and what we've yes. had to walk through in the past few seasons. But it would be a, a year of rehabilitation and yeah. rehab for those whose hearts are ready and for those who are open to it. Mm. So he said, of course, 2022 would be a rehab year, but it will also be a recoup year, mm. a year of recoupment where God is going to sort of start recovering recovering certain things and recovering certain narratives in our yes. lives that that we felt like may have been lost. But God is a God who's, who redeems yes, time. Yes, he does. Yes, he you know, does. He bends time to our favor. So then, mm -hmm. of course, some people may feel like they missed moments or things have passed them by. Like I think in 2020, like it, that just shocked the world and maybe some plans that people may have had, mm -hmm. uh, they had to put on hold. But God is a God that can redeem yes, time he is. and bend yes, time he is. and optimize time mm -hmm. for our our favor. So I felt like what he was showing me is that for those who are hungry and for those whose hearts are ready, this would be a recoup year mm -hmm. where he's going to start the process of recovering certain things that we may have lost along the way for, from the past two years of, good. of what we've been in, you so know, this, this season we've been yeah. in. But it's all a part of the awakening. It's yes. all a part of God restoring us, restoring his image in the earth. Mm -hmm. Because, um, I'm pretty sure, like, we all know that if you turn on the TV, if you, yep. Um, yep. you know, you can see that there's an attack on the image of God. Yes. Like, there's something targeting the young generation. Yep. And God is saying, like, right now I need my people to grow in their vision of me so they yes. can express to the world who I truly am. Right. That I'm not a God that's, you know, a, a, can't heal, that I'm not a God that can't work miracles. And I think a lot of things we, we, we talk about, but it's not revelation in the heart. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what God is doing now. He's, he's allowing us to take what we've learned over the years and make it reality and allow there to be a true deep conviction in our hearts mm -hmm. of, of who he is, that he's a big God and there's nothing too difficult Amen. for him. Yes. So then God is like saying, like, I'm changing the, per <laughs> the perception of my church. I'm giving them eyes to see. I'm removing the blindness mm -hmm. and I'm giving them the ability to see how heaven sees. Like when when like on earth, like we can see storms. And and the passage that comes to mind is even when Jesus was yeah. in the boat. Yeah. yeah. And they were trying to cross and go to Matthew the other eight. side. Yeah. yeah. Matthew, it's Matthew eight. eight. Yeah. And how there was a storm that came and the waves and the sea mm -hmm. and the disciples were afraid. But of course, Jesus was asleep. But of course, the disciples, you know, <laughs> woke right, him right, up. Right, right, right. And then, yeah, I could say this and then we can transition because. We have like. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. A minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time oh, flies. Man. Time flies. But I think this is key. I'm going to yes. make this real quick. But before they got on the boat, Jesus said, we're going to go to the other side. Mm -hmm. But then while we're on the boat, we get encountered with a storm. And then the disciples forgot who was with them on the boat. Yes. It was Jesus on the boat. They forgot who was with them and they forgot what he what said. He said. he said that we're going to get to the other side. So then regardless of what we're seeing, even in our day to day, we, are, we may be facing a storm, but there's a guarantee that we're going to get, get to, to the, the other side. side. Mm -hmm. You know, and all we have to do is have faith in what he said and then have faith in who he is. Yeah. As long as Jesus is on, on the boat with us, yes. we have no need to fear. My we can Lord. just rest and who he is and know that we're getting to the, the other, other side. side. So then I don't want mm -hmm. believers to be restless and full of fear, but just have faith and rest in who God is because we're going to get to the other side. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. Woo. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, we're going to get to the other side. <laughs> we're going to get, get to, to the, the other, other side. Mm -hmm. Well, in your word about awakening, too, I think mm -hmm. that's been validated even by others mm -hmm. and prophetic. Yeah. Um, that um, that yes, our eyes are being opened in many ways, mm -hmm. and uh, and the church needs to come out of its slumber, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and 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 be the church that Jesus is going to come back for. Mm -hmm. um, I would love in these in these few moments that we have left for uh, one of you or both of you to pray mm -hmm. uh, for the for the audience. Uh, maybe you can tag team, but you got to do it like yeah. a minute. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> so that's your mm -hmm. challenge. Mm -hmm. But okay. and you can look at the camera if you want, mm -hmm. but go for it. Okay. This yeah. one right here. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, so um, yeah, I just want to say a quick prayer to bless the viewing audience out there. And I hope our story encouraged you to go after God and even trust him that we will get to the other side. But let me just say a, a special prayer. So Father, mm -hmm. I just pray for mm -hmm. every single person that's mm -hmm. viewing this broadcast, Lord, that you will touch their hearts, O oh God, and that you will cause them to see what heaven sees, that they won't find themselves bound mm -hmm. by fear or bound by just worry. But God, I pray that you will impart mm -hmm. faith in them in this season yes. to know that they will get to the other side, that although the storm is brewing and the waves are boisterous, God, that they will get to the other mm -hmm. side because, Lord, you say that we will get to the other side. So, Father, I pray that you will impart in them a conviction, a knowing in their hearts that all is well, oh yes. God, and that you're going to move mm -hmm. in our lives and you're going to make those things, that those uh, crooked places straight and those rough places smooth. So, yes. Father, I just pray that your peace covers the viewing audience. Lord, may you allow your love yes. to envelop them in this season. May you cover them with your feathers mm -hmm. and let them know, God, that all is well. So, God, I just thank you for what you're doing um, in your church throughout this, mm -hmm. uh, this season, this hour we're in. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's power. Joy is power. And one thing that the enemy wants to do is put a cap on your joy, put a cap on the well of your joy and cause those rivers to stop flowing. And that's why I like the prophetic word that uh, was given earlier. It talked about a spirit of lethargy in the land and apathy in the land. And that's what the enemy wants to do to cause us to be apathetic, full of lethargy, lazy, and not, not full of passion. But God wants our passion to be strong. Why? Because it's with passion and joy that you draw from him. You drink from him. You drink from the well of salvation. You draw from it. So then I don't even know what you need in your life. Even if it's a healing, if you're sick and if you need healing, you better draw that healing from a place of joy. Remember, we sow in tears, but we reap in joy. Reaping, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It's all about entering the joy of the Lord, which is our strength because we we draw from that heavenly realm f with an attitude of joy. So don't be sad, be glad. How many guys heard of that song uh, by uh, man, Bobby McFerrin? Don't worry, bum, bum, bum. Be happy, dun, dun, dun. You know, I don't remember all the words, but it says, this is one line in that song. It says, in all of life, you will have some trouble, but if you worry, you make it double. <laughs> now, that's a secret right there. And what he said is that in, in years ago, he said, hey, if you worry, the trouble that you're experiencing right now is going to be added to it. If you maintain this worry, your trouble will double because trouble don't help you in any form or fashion. That's why Jesus says, take no thought. Don't worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to have. Because let tomorrow take care of itself. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Don't worry. Bum, bum, bum. Be happy. Bum, 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 bum. You know, remember that song. If you have to play it again on YouTube, whatever, do that. Get into that atmosphere, that environment, because really that's the word of the Lord for us. Even today, God is telling us, don't worry, be happy, be happy. That is your attitude. That is the beatitude. Happy is the man. But how do we access joy, this joy from heaven? Um, one of the things we know, the scripture says, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. So one of the ways we access the joy of the Lord is by spending time in his presence, spending time worshiping him, having communion with him, setting our gaze on him, setting our heart to, to be fixed on him. That's how God begins to produce and grow joy in the human heart. Our heart becomes full of joy the, the, uh, in his presence there's fullness of joy which means there's an unlimited supply of joy when we come into his presence and we drink from the river of delight God wants to send us to the rivers whose streams shall make glad the city of God God has a river of gladness that he wants us to drink from all we had to do is just spend time in his presence so then that's one way another way we get joy in our life is through the word and there's actually a scripture that I just want to read briefly that talks about that it's in Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 and it reads thy words were found and I did eat them and thy word was the was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart walk with me Lord walk with me walk with me Lord Walk with me, all the 
along my pilgrim journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me.